So uh, today is the 10 year anniversary of Andrea Dworkin's death. Um, and I thought it would be appropriate to do a small video about kind of my um, relation to her work and just kind of to honor her in some way. I um, definitely have a lot of political differences with Andrea Dworkin, which has become apparent over the years. But I do have to, like, credit her with a lot of my movement into more radical forms of feminism. Um, and really, I remember, like, how old am I? I'm 29 now. I was, like, 24 maybe, I think. So, yeah, like, five years ago, I went to Pal's Books in Portland. I was living in this, like run down, like, uh, townhouse, um, from the twenties that was just like full of mold and like just weird psychic activity and like fucked up neighbors and everything. And it was just this, like, I felt like at the time, like really oppressed and I was just getting out of this abusive relationship um, with a man and, like, starting to see just, like, how, um, inevitable that was, it seemed. Um, so, yeah, I went to Pals and I found, like, a hardback copy of Intercourse that was, like, really cheap. It was, like, eight bucks or something. And, um, I kind of had it on my shelf for a while, not reading it. Like, you know, you do that with books sometimes. You pick them up with the intention to read them and you never do. Uh, with Intercourse, even though I'd read, like, Woman Hating by her before, Intercourse I was hesitant to read because I knew after I read it, like, things would never be the same. I knew after I read that book, like, things in my life would have to change, and they did, drastically. So, I mean, that was five years ago. So, I mean, she'd been dead for five years at that point. Um... You know, I, I've been really disappointed with the, like, people who knew her, like, and worked with her so closely and considered her friends and, like, um, in the past few years, like, her husband, John Stoltenberg, who is, I don't even want to get into that, why he's even given any credence by, like, any radical feminist is beyond me because he is such a vile fucking man. But, um, like, yeah, he has, like, used his dead wife as, like, political capital to advance the trans agenda. Um, irrespective of how this issue is actually affecting, like, women from the same backgrounds as Andrea or, like, how the issue has shifted even since she's been alive. Um, I really doubt that Andrea Dworkin, despite all of her, like, political, my differences with her, I don't think she would have been the type of person to just blindly accept uh, cases like um, rapists getting sex changes and then being moved to women's prisons or, um, like... Cases like men who think they're selkies um, walking around naked in places where teen girls walk around and then having the teen girls punished for complaining because they saw a grown man's dick. Um, or women not being able to go to the gym or use the gym because a big fucking man who looks exactly like a man is walking around <laughs> in the ladies' uh, dressing room. Like, you know, these these sorts of issues, like, I can't see how someone like her would be totally okay with it. Um, even so, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's the same thing because Catherine McKinnon has now let herself be... Um, let emails that she wrote back and forth with um, that asshole from the trans advocate, uh, <laughs> she's let those be put up, which is interesting because uh, when I know women who've written to her asking her opinions about this issue who have 
she is flat out told, you can't share this with anyone. You can't talk about, you can't put this public, blah, blah, blah. Like, so, yeah, fuck her, too. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's been, it's it's kind of, like, disappointing to see just how, like, reactionary those people are. And it does call into question, well, like, what was Andrea really like? How radical was she? I know that there were instances of her um, comparing lesbian separatists to Nazis, which is obviously politically fucking wrong. Um, and also there were, uh, I mean, her book, Woman Hating, obviously uh, there was some really weird shit about, like, the incest taboo needing to be, like, lifted. I mean, stuff like that. Like, um, but the thing about her was, like, she was a really advanced, brilliant thinker. And had she been a man, she would be, like, very celebrated. And because she was not a man, she has been um, demonized the way she has. So, I mean, that is part of her legacy. It's like this person who was, first and foremost, I think, a writer and um, someone who was really interested in, like, radical thought and taking it to its logical conclusions in a lot of ways and... Um, she obviously spent too much time um, in leftism and uh, that sort of thing, and that's reflected in her work, but it is brilliant for what it is. And I think, like, with women, like, we have, we have so much um, potential, and, like, Andrea, like, really was prolific in how she wrote and, like, what she wrote about and how deep her work was, Um she should really be considered, like, one of the great American writers because she's really in the same spirit as a lot of these fucking, like, dickhead <laughs> men who, like, uh, our culture just celebrates. Um, she's got the same, like, really, like, passionate work uh, that she's produced. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Definitely, reading Andrea Dworkin was a step in my progression to becoming, like, who I am today, and I definitely um, really resonate with a lot of what she did. Um, I I do feel like, I, as I've, like, come out, I've got more of a lesbian focus to my politics, and I definitely see, like, how most of what even many radical feminists focus on is heterosex sexual women's issues. Um, <clears throat> even so, like I do like very strongly see like, Hey, this is, you know, someone whose legacy I'm standing on. And I mean, she was a lesbian for part of her life in the seventies before she married that fucking prick. So yeah. Um, these, these, uh, these are complicated times <laughs> we live in, and, uh, it's definitely, um, difficult to process, um, someone so powerful and prolific dying as young as she did, and you can definitely see how her work really made her sick, because she definitely exposed herself to a lot of other people's trauma, um, and I know she did that because she, she loved them, and she wanted to, but, I mean, for a lot of us, we just can't do it, so, yeah, she's definitely missed, I wonder what it would have been like to work with her if I would have had a lot of the same experiences with her I've had with, like, other, like, well-known feminists that I've met and, like, been ex exposed to and worked with, like, oftentimes, it's really shitty. Um, I wonder if it would have been the same, and I have no way of knowing, because she's gone. So, it's sad. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, me talking about her, and, uh, hope that you remember her, too.